Hey, what's up, nerds? It's Paul at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today, we are going to talk about the new Slaves to Darkness update that we got in the most recent White Dwarf. So, Tome Celestial from White Dwarf 468. Um, we have uh, changes to Allegiance abilities. We got um, some Core Battalions. And we got some unique army... Uh, grand strategies and battle tactics so just going over kind of quickly but um just so that you're aware of the changes go pick up that white dwarf if you are a slaves to darkness player for sure um so right off the top allegiance ability changes uh dark oath chieftain dark oath war queen and ogroid myrmidon all gain marks of chaos so they can be nurgle slash zinch or corn or undivided cultists also gain the god marks they have to have the same god mark as your general and or i'm sorry they if they have the same god mark as your general they become battle line interesting so they're always battle line in idolaters, and here now they're battle line if they're the same mark as your general. The important things to note here that by getting a mark of chaos, these three heroes now also produce the aura of chaos ability. That is your 12 inch aura around your heroes that give you a different ability based on. Uh, what god mark they have and the corresponding god marks of the units within 12 inches so that's really important uh, the other thing to note here is that these god marks are coming from allegiance abilities not from war scroll errata so if you use these as allies or coalition in other armies they are not going to get their god marks they're only god marked in slaves to darkness so Shout out real quick to most improved player for this particular update, uh, the Dark Oath Chieftain. So he now gets God marks. So you can mark him, you know, whatever you want to. He has, you know, six inch move, five up save, six wounds, uh, eight bravery. Not super exciting on stats. He can do some damage a little bit on offense if he charges. Um, but the really key thing here is his command ability, Last Grasp of Glory. You can use this command ability at the start of the combat phase. If you do so, pick a friendly model with this command ability until the end of the phase. Friendly Chaos Marauders and Cultists that are slain within 12 inches of this model, uh that have not yet fought in that phase can fight before being removed from play. So, your Chaos Marauders now are a lot more Glass Kennedy in 3rd edition than they were previously. Before, you could get them on a 4-up rerollable save pretty easily. But now, um, they're typically just going to be on a 5-up. So, they're going to shoot in there and blow their attacks as quickly as possible, but if your opponent happens to get in there for attacks before you, um, this gives you the opportunity to still fight with those models and get you know maximum damage in. Perhaps even more damage because you're clearing away some models that were in the way to then pile in and get more models into combat depending on how large your unit size is so this isn't quite the same as death frenzy because it's only models that have not yet fought in the phase but i think it's still a really good ability and this is one that um i think he's some cool tech i think he's gonna come out interesting might be showing up in some lists he's um also greatly improved by having that god mark and having the mark of chaos in addition to this command ability so you get those sweet bonuses in addition to um fighting when models die anyway moving on to more new abilities 
We got two core battalions. The Chaos Warband is one Slaves to Darkness hero, four to eight Slaves to Darkness units that are not leaders, behemoths, or Varengard, and zero to one Slaves to Darkness behemoths. And you are Unified or Slayers. Unified, of course, is the one drop, and Slayers gives you once per game free all-out attack or unleash hell. Then Overlords of Chaos is just three to six Varengard, and it is Unified or Expert. An Expert is free all-out attack or all-out defense. I think these are not particularly interesting. Um, I think the core battalions out of the core rules are probably better than these most of the time. Um, I'm not sure where you would really use these. Um, yeah, I think as far as doing a unified drop battle regiment is usually going to be better than these options. So, and then slayers and expert are really not that good. So I'm not sure where people are really going to be using these. Grand strategies and battle tactics. So our grand strategy is completed at the end of the battle if there is at least one Slaves to Darkness unit wholly within each large quarter of the battlefield. Um, this one feels a little hard to do. It's relying on having at least four units still left on the battlefield and having them pretty spread out. So I think this is a little bit difficult. There's a lot that are way easier to do for Slaves to Darkness. Um, I think there's this is this is cute, but it's not really great. So then we have our two battle tactics that we got: Enthrall to Chaos, pick one objective within 12 inches of enemy units. And you complete this battle tactic if there are no enemy units within 12 inches of that objective at the end of the turn. So I think this is actually a solid one. This is, you know, picking off a lightly defended enemy objective. Um, there's a lot of times you can just throw a halfway decent hammer at a weak unit that's defending an objective and take it over. So I think this is definitely one that's possible and that we should keep in mind. Um, and it's kind of a little bit of a duplication of some other things as well. So I think this is, this one is almost one that could be in the core rules or in the general's handbook. This is definitely a, a very doable one. It is really not slaves to darkness specific. Uh, and then our last one here, lust for power, pick one friendly slaves to darkness unit with the eye of the gods keyword. That is most of your heroes. Um, you complete this tactic if that hero rolls on the Eye of the Gods table this turn. So rolling on the Eye of the Gods table, as a reminder, that happens when a hero with the Eye of the Gods keyword slays either a monster or a hero during the turn. So very situational, but also doable. I think this is a good option for certain situations and certain builds it's nice to have this option available to you um you know there's plenty of times where there's just a monster or a hero left with very few wounds um the slaves to darkness heroes that have the eye of the gods keyword are generally not that powerful on offense um, with the exceptions of, I would say, um, Chaos Lord on Karkadrak is decent, and your Chaos Lord on Manticore are pretty good um, for being able to pull this off, but you're probably not going to rip down a monster from full health down to zero with them. Uh, they can definitely pick off heroes, you know, especially like the five wound heroes that are hanging around pretty easily and complete this battle tactic. Um, so I think both of these battle tactics, I think, are definitely possible. They're both a little bit situational, lust for power more so than others. Um, but Enthrall to Chaos, I think, is definitely one that we can use pretty often. And Conquerors of the Realms, I just don't see anybody ever picking this. This is just not a better option than what we have available already out of the core rules. 
So that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this little summary. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more. Turn on notifications if you're new here and uh, get alerts whenever we post up new videos. If you'd care to support the channel even further than just liking and subscribing, you can support us over on Patreon, which we greatly appreciate. appreciate. Appreciate, yeah. Um, we greatly appreciate and thanks to our patrons over there on Patreon as well. Uh, you can also come join us on Facebook and Twitter. Feel free to shoot me messages, uh, join the Facebook group, and post things over there. You can ask me questions directly. I can gladly do some math hammer for you um, and help you walk through those sorts of things. For now, that's it. I'll talk to you guys later.